What's up, everybody? This is Head Kick Audio, episode number 21. John. <laughs> In the introduction, you heard none other than By the Gods with our theme that they created for us. And on today's show, we're going to talk Bellator 225, Titan 56, and Dana White's Contender Series, what is it, 24, 25, something like that? Uh, 25, yes. 25, all right. Some big numbers, 21, 25, 56, 225, son of a gun. Another big number, Bellator, 14 fights, 14 finishes, holy shit. That was fucking amazing. And if if everything's working correctly, you should see Jonathan right there, but he's not right there. He's actually in Sierra Vista. We're trying this whole new thing out. In my humble abode, hopefully this uh, <laughs> hopefully this all works out. Well, we'll find out soon enough, I'm sure. Um, if not, then you're just going to be hearing Jonathan's lovely voice. And if you're listening to the audio, well, that's all you ever hear is our lovely voices. That's so, right. But it's good to hear, good to hear, and, uh, you know, shout out to all the fans in Texas, uh, obviously Arizona, uh, California, Utah, Wisconsin, um, picking up new fans all over the country, so um, keep an eye out for that shit. We also got a special guest in today's episode, which we shot earlier, and we're going to piece that shit all together, and it's going to look seamless, I promise. I might be like, er, er, but it'll be good. But uh, yeah, Jason the Specimen Suarez. Uh, he is the Titan FC featherweight champion. He just fought last night. Okay, okay, well, last night as in Friday night, which was the 23rd. So August 23rd, he fought, and then just a couple hours ago on the 24th, so uh, today, uh... He gave us an interview. Like, holy shit, how fucking cool was that? That was really fucking cool. I, this is the first time we've ever been able to interview a fighter literally the day after a fight. Super fucking cool. So that'll be in the episode later. Lots of cool shit going on at Head Kick Audio. Um, we're working on another featherweight champion uh, from another organization. Hopefully we can get with her later this week. And I know there's a couple other fighters that, uh, you know, we're just trying to work out the timing here. So... We're definitely, definitely going to be keeping this fucking show as badass as possible. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. I always know what you're saying. Yeah, well, you better. <laughs> if not, we're in trouble. <laughs> if not, we're in trouble. So let's go ahead and start <laughs> with uh, Dana White's Contender Series. There was five fights, and there was obviously five winners. Two finishes and only one contract. Yeah, that that was weird. Uh, what have, what have they done? Like five or six like contender series? Like since I started watching it, uh, since they came back for the season, this is the first one that I've only seen one contract given out. That was weird. Oh, excuse me, I don't know what's going on. Allergies of some sort. So bear with me through the entire episode. You're going to be stuck with that the entire episode, but I'll do my best to, you know, maintain a low level of allergies, whatever the hell's going on. Um, yeah, uh, I was actually, like, super engrossed in uh, our radio show that we do on Tuesday nights, craniumradio.com, or check us out on the TuneIn app. I was actually trying to, now I'm wheezing, what the fuck, do you hear that shit? <laughs> I'm trying to get that out of there. Hopefully that's the last time I have to do that. Um... So I actually didn't get to catch a lot of the main event, but it looks like we had a round two finish, and it was early in the round. Leon Shabazian falls victim to Philip Rowe. Um, not really 100% sure how else the rest of the fight went, but these guys were fucking tall and lanky, so I imagine it was a pretty mm -hmm. decent fight. And Shabazian, that name should sound familiar, there was another Shabazian on the Contender Series last year, Edmund Shabazian, who was actually in the UFC middleweight division. These guys were welterweights. Um, just before that, you had uh, Jamal, how do you say his last name? Is it Poggs? 
Uh, I think that's how they, uh, how they said it. Okay, he defeated Marcos Brigajo. Brigajo? Brigajo? Brigajo. Brigajo? Brigajo. It's like Brochacho, just the Brazilian version. Possibly. <laughs> um, yeah, so there was a decision there, 30-27s across the board. Steve Garcia finished uh, Desmond Torres in round one. Mallory Martin defeated Nicole DeSenji. DeSenji? Yeah. And then Ricky Steele took a uh, Ricky Steele took a split decision from Phil Caracapa. I'm looking at these names on my screen over here. You can't see the names, but that's why I keep looking <laughs> down. Um, <clears throat> Ricky Steele should sound familiar. He was on an Ultimate Fighter where he didn't lose. He had an injury. So that kicked him off the show and made him ineligible to win. Mallory Martin, LFA veteran right there. Um, she's a bad little chick, man. Uh, she's still pretty early in her career. I'm not surprised that she didn't get the contract. It was a fun scrap, but not a very technical scrap, aside from Mallory's head movement and her footwork. I'd say that that was probably the best part about that fight. Both chicks were pretty scrappy, but none too much there. Um, Steve Garcia, Desmond Torres, uh, you had a flyweight moving up to bantamweight, and then I believe uh, one of them missed weight. I believe it was Garcia, so that's probably why there was only one contract. Because though there was two finishes, count them two, uh, one of them didn't make weight. So, And then Jamal, he was hitting those takedowns pretty good, but these guys kind of made it... Uh, I think both guys were doing a good job of making the other one look bad, <laughs> if that's a <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> so, uh, Philip Rowe is the only one that takes home a contract, but I'd say uh, keep an eye on Steele, because he looked pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, all the winners. Keep, keep an eye on all these guys. I thought they all looked pretty impressive. Oh, man. This is going to be a fun episode, right? Oh, yeah, well, with uh, your sniffling and then with my coughing in between, it's going to be a kick-ass show. That's how we do it. Goddamn allergies. Let's go ahead and move on to Titan 56. Now, <clears throat> remember, I told you, Jason Soares, or Soares, he just fought Friday night, which is our last night, right? It's our last night, because we're, in, we're currently in two nights. Okay? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, Jason Torres, he defeated Andrew Whitney to defend his featherweight title. That is right. I said he defended his featherweight title via armbar round deuce. Now, what is so crazy about that is we got a champ on hours notice to come onto the show. So, you best find that man on social media. Give him a follow and let him know you heard him on Head Kick Audio, man. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm still in shock and awe that you know he was willing to come on. You know, literally hours notice, like we've been saying. And dude, he's super chill, dude, too. Super easy to work with, too. I don't think I've okay. ever had a fighter be that like chill and just like, no, nah, man, hey, cool, no, it's whatever. Like, usually it's like, I can't, uh, or hey, and this, and that, and uh. Not saying that any of the fighters that we've worked with have been difficult, but this guy was definitely the easiest. Definitely the easiest. So, find uh, the specimen, which is his nickname, find him on social media, and seriously give that dude a follow. Oh my goodness, it's never ending, isn't it? <laughs> like I said, round two, arm bar, and it was at the end of the round. Uh, 439. So this guy, he's yeah. now 14 and 0. Okay, that's right, 14 and 0. The only blemish on his entire mixed martial arts record is a loss to Julian Arosa, who's a current uh, UFC featherweight. If he's still contracted, uh, he did just suffer, I think, back-to-back -back losses on his second stint 
So I'm not sure if Mr. Erosa is still on the UFC roster. But, nonetheless, to my knowledge, a UFC fighter, right? But that was the only blemish. He had no amateur record, which you'll find out about later. And uh, I, I really don't understand why this guy's not in the UFC. I, I just, I don't understand it. But you will hear more from uh, the specimen later when we plant the interview somewhere in the episode, which we'll probably actually do right after we're done with this. So I'll set that up pretty nicely, or at least I'll attempt. Um, Shaheen Santana defeated Lee Henry Lilly via split decision. Oh, no. It's never ending. Uh, I believe that was the co-main event, and it was a kickboxing affair. So, I think I was trying to scramble to find a fighter and stumbled upon uh, Soros. It was, he was actually difficult to find because I believe his uh, handle is a specimen. John, look that up for me real quick um, while I go on results here. Raymond Ramos defeated Kenny Porter via unanimous decision. He had 29-28 across the board there. Landon Quinones defeated Calvin Glover via uh, knockout round one. And then Danny Sabateo defeated Philip Keller uh, punches. Uh, it was a knockout in round one. And that was at 141. And that was your main card. I don't have the, the prelim results here. Uh, the page I am on does not tell me those. So, I do not have those. So I suggest, uh, if you want to know the results of that, don't look at the page that I'm looking at. I'm not going to, you know, name names either. Uh, there was, I think it was the second fight. I think it was the Landon Quinones versus Calvin Glover. Excuse me. It was one of the first two fights, right? So. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about uh, Titan 56. So, oh, okay. no, computer, why do you stop? We have enough, like, tangent interruption type thingies. <laughs> My nose is enough. We don't need you to. Um, so, the, in one of these fights, unfortunately, I didn't have Jonathan with me, so I don't have notes because he's the note taker and I am the horrible rememberer. If that is even a thing, if it's not, hashtag remember. remember. That is me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's my mumble rap stage name. <laughs> I'm, I'm Lil Remember. <laughs> Anyways, uh, people are probably like shutting down their computers after that. Like, fuck this. I don't need to listen to this anymore. Go away. That's garbage. Get out of here. Um, anyways. There was a fight on this card. You know what? I need to figure this out. Did you get me a handle? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, you can uh, you can locate Jason Zares on uh, Twitter at specimen s p e c i m e n Zares s o a r e s. And is that uh, Twitter and IG? Uh, just Twitter, um, his IG, I'm pretty sure it'll be the same. My yeah, hate? It's, yeah, it's the same thing, uh, okay. Specimen's Daughters. You're so white, but you say that so, no, it's still fucked up, but that's okay, that's oh, okay. okay. You're white, you have an excuse. Um, that's if, right. If you notice, the air conditioning just turned off, because that's right, here in Arizona, we're still in the middle of summer, so... We get two seasons, summer, cold, deal with it. Um, <laughs> like I said, I just, I need to find out. So I'm going to attempt to figure this out while we are live and hopefully I'll be able to find an answer. But I'll explain the situation. There was a fighter, he was fighting, he got hit, he didn't like it, he fell down. The other fighter that hit him followed him to the ground, right? And then was punching the shit out of him, and the dude's tapping, right? And me and the announcers 
And I'm sure everybody else that was watching was like, the dude tapped, call the fight. And nothing. And then the dude stops, and then he starts tapping again. And it's like, okay, come on, ref, he's tapping. You think the fight... Oh my god. It took three fucking times, bruv. Three fucking times to figure this out. Where's the search... Oh, right here. I'm not used to Twitter on a laptop. That's crazy. It was. I heard Dean in there, was it? Oh, 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 burn. <laughs> burn. Uh, it was Mazzagatti. No, I'm joking. I don't know who it was. It was, a, it was probably like a local ref. Because, uh, oh. yeah. Well, I'm sure you know the the referees that are at the higher level would have noticed that and wouldn't let wouldn't let the fighter take that much damage. Especially, you know, your only job is to make sure that uh, excuse me, as a ref, is to make sure the fighters are doing what they're supposed to, and if they're tapping, fucking be like, okay, they're done. So that way, they don't take any further damage, uh, which will in turn shorten their fucking fight career. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I am definitely not a fan of fighters taking extra punishment. Which, you saw that in the co-main event to Bellator 225, and kind of like a little bit in the main event. I mean, it really just, come on, shut up. Maybe, yeah. maybe I just turn this computer all the way down, because I didn't like adjust anything. But, no, that might mess up with what we're doing, so... Sorry, we're going to have to suffer through uh, <coughs> that, this, and that. So, I mean... Well, well, maybe later you can find it uh, posted up on uh, the Head Kick Audio Twitter. Well, actually, I just found it. I just ah. found it. It was the yeah. it was the Queen Nones fight. Oh, come on. Mm. Laptop, you are slow, slow, slow. <laughs> so slow. Yeah, it was the Landon Quinones defeating some. Oh no, it's it's gonna play. It's gonna play. Okay. Well, I know who it was. I know who it was. Okay. Um. Yeah. So it was pretty bad, and it's not like the tapping was done in a place where you couldn't see it. It was right in the motherfucker's sight. He is looking directly in the direction of the tap, and it happens three times before the ref stops it. Now, yeah. it was on the ground, which is definitely where that guy, Calvin Glover, didn't want to be. Mm -hmm. And he knows it. Before the fight, he was saying he needs to stop getting in these wild exchanges because he just wants to throw hands and he knows he's terrible on the ground. So as soon as it went to the ground, I'm assuming he's probably thinking, get me the fuck out of here. I don't want to be here. And he's getting punched in the side of the fucking head uh, probably three times as many as were needed courtesy of the shit stoppage. So, yeah. anyway. But yeah, that was Landon Quinones defeating Calvin Glover. But uh, you can check out Titan FC on UFC Fight Pass. That's where I watch it. I, I'm not sure where else you can watch it. I'm not 100% sure. But I can tell you that they got some quality fucking fighters in there. Because yeah, Soros is... The dude's fucking good, man. I think... Sorry. I think it's... Uh, I think he's UFC ready. I mean, get get this fool in here. Well, I mean, he's fucking 14 and 0 without an amateur career. Like, come on. Like, he went straight pro. And... He's fucking doing this shit. Like, get him, get him, man. Sign it, him. What, what, what accent was that? He went straight pro. He went straight pro. Bro, you've never seen Nacho Libre? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yes, he's yes, ready. I have. He's ready to go pro. He's he's ready. Dude, I, love, I love that fucking movie. I mean, he's already a pro, but he's ready to go pro, pro. Uh, pro, bro. <laughs> All right, so now let's get to the main, like, the meat and potatoes, right? And I'm not saying that Titan and... There goes AC again. You can hear it now. You can, you can hear it. <laughs> I'm not saying that Titan and Dana White's Contender Series are any less, but it's, it's essentially all about clicks and 
the, the Bellator, since it was the, the biggest promotion, putting on the biggest card of the weekend, it's going to get more attention than the others. So we're highlighting Titan with, uh, you know, we just went over the results there. We said props to the featherweight champ, and we're going to have him on the show. So I'm going to put that in right here. So you're going to hear us talk with Titan FC featherweight champion Jason the Specimen Suarez. Right about meow. We are here with Titan Featherweight Champ, Jason Suarez. How are you doing today, my good sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, guys. And, you know, I'm feeling, feeling awesome yesterday. I, I got the job done, and I'm totally healthy and ready to go. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who uh, don't know, uh, Jason just defended his featherweight title with Titan last night, and is <laughs> so nice and uh, is, is you know giving us a chance to talk to him. So thank you for taking the time out of your day, uh, you know, just you know hours after your defense. So thank you for that. And uh, how you feeling, man? No, I feel great. I mean, obviously, like, a little sore, you know, your body gets a little more tense than, like, you know, normal training, but my ankle maybe like, a little bruised from kicking the shin a couple times, but other than that, like, I came out super unscathed, didn't take any hits or any punishment, and uh, we got, you know, got out there super nice and quick with the finish, so, I, you know, I could legit fight, you know, this Friday coming up. <laughs> <laughs> So it seems like since you got with Titan, you've been on every other card. You've been quite a fixture over there. Are they taking pretty good care of you? Yeah, I mean, like, the, the Titan Black, the, the TO and everything, they've been being really, really good to me. You know, like, you know, basically, he's keeping me as busy as I want to be, you know. So I've already fought three times this year, which is really good. I want to stay active. I want to, you know, stay relevant, stay winning these fights, and just keep on improving. And, you know, Titan's been allowing me to do that, bringing guys from your fight and all that. So they've been nothing but, you know, class act and, and being, being uh, real good to me. Okay, at this point, we're 14-0, we're and 0, and we're not fighting uh, chumps. I mean, throughout your career, uh, you fought some pretty uh, good fighters um, at the time, you know, in accordance with your record. So my question here would be for you is... What do you think is next? Yeah, like, you're, you're just, like good that you say that too, because I like, a lot of people don't understand, you know, like, Florida is a mega for MMA, so, like, fighting a 7 and 3 guy in Florida is like fighting a, you know, 12 0 guy from Kansas, you know, and no disrespect to Kansas, but they don't have anything like what we have here in Florida, you know? So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it's a whole different ballgame. It's the best camp in the world, playing with the best guys in the world, and you have to fight these guys. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, like, last night, Kamara and I were watching my fight, and I, I heard Kamara Usman, one of the commentators, and obviously, obviously, UFC, I was a chance, saying that he doesn't, he's asking, too, what more do I have to do, you know, like, last three fights, I went one by knockout, knocked out the first round, one by ground pound finish, and one by submission finish, so I've done, I've done everything, I've showed all skills everywhere, and, yeah, it's like, that time I start, you know, I get the call up. Okay, and if we, if we do get the call... Are we thinking, uh, I mean, obviously a full training camp, but what if they offered you something like the Dana White's Contender Series? I know that they're, uh, I think they're doing their last show next week, so I don't think you'd be getting a call for that right now, but would you be into, like, some smaller opportunity to prove yourself? I mean, of course, I'm not going to say no to that, but it's not something that I'm really looking forward to. I'd rather just, I mean, like, I think, I think, like, for example, you got all these guys, on the, the Contender Show, you can see it, like, you got six and two guys, five and one guys, like, we got lower level guys that are, you know, trying, trying to get in there, you know, I think I've proven myself being 14 and 0, you know, I have double the fights that, that's something that most of these guys in the show even have, you know, and they're all wins, and, and majority all finishes, so. Yeah, you've only got, you've only got two decisions on your record, so, yeah, you're, you're a finisher. Exactly, one of those decisions was, my shoulder was broken and out, so. Um, that's why I didn't finish the fight. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to the co-host Jonathan before I hog up all of the airways. Uh, Jonathan, what do you got for the champ? 
Hey, how's it going? Uh, I just got a couple questions for you. Uh, my first question I got for you is, I mean, I'm relatively new to the sport. Um, I know that there's uh, professional fights and then there's amateur fights. Um, I didn't notice any amateur fights under your belt. Did you just go pro or did you not have any amateur fights at all? Yeah, zero amateur fights. I just did, I just did grappling and went straight pro. No shit. No. Damn. That's what's up. Yeah, I never did an amateur, the amateur fight. Like, so I started fighting at the end of 2012, so I think November 2012, my first pro fight. And my coach didn't want to do amateurs. Like, at the, that time, it's the same thing. It's mainly like no shin guard and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. and I, I already had lots of experience. I've done lots of grappling tournaments and I had trained with guys. Like, I've been full training camps with like Dominic Cruz by then and all that stuff. So, we just decided to go straight pro. I mean, it's, it's, it's worked out so so far, you know. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and go, to go on record, I recommend, especially if you're in a state where they're doing like proper amateurs, I don't believe an amateur with like no shin guard, these small gloves is proper. I believe like amateurs should be, you know, bigger shin guards and bigger gloves, all this stuff. So they, you know, get a chance to go in there and get experience. And if you have the opportunity, I, I, I think all the you guys should take advantage of you know you get experience without being able to put your record online. Okay, that was uh that was pretty choppy. I don't know what happened there. Um I, I got it but it it uh basically what he was saying is that the the, the at the amateur level it's not enough padding? Yeah, I don't well, so so it depends on the state. Some states are, are, are doing it alright, but more and more I see it not right. I in my opinion that I feel that the amateurs, they're just doing pretty much, it's a pro fight, but you're the amateur, which is, it looks like you're, so you're taking all the risk, big punishment, no payday, chance of getting seriously hurt for nothing, you know, like you might as well go pro. Mm-hmm. But when they're doing amateurs with shin guards, no elbows, bigger gloves, that's how I believe it should be done. Mm-hmm. And now these guys, you know, they're amateurs, they get a chance to go in there, gain experience without, you know, the less risk of, of, you know, serious injury, you know? I agree. So, so, no I, I can yeah, definitely. I, I, I don't agree with this. Like in, in Florida, I think it just passed that after you have three fights, now we can throw elbows in amateur. And, and I'm not even going to allow them. I'm not going to agree with that. Like when my fighters go amateur, they're not going to, we're going to agree that there's no elbows to be thrown. If that's the case, we'll just go pro, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I can actually attest to what uh, Jason is talking about here because I had a couple of amateur fights where there was elbows allowed, there was zero padding. It was just like a, a professional fight, but we were amateurs. So. Yeah, it's, cr- it's, cr- it's crazy, you know? Like, in the point of amateur, amateur is to gain experience, like, without, the, you know, get the, the, the higher risk of, like, serious damage, you know? And, and being able to, you know, turn over and fight again, you know? That's what like amateur boxing and stuff. But amateur MMA with elbows, like, you're, you're going to get cut, you're going to get knocked out, you're going to get seriously hurt for, for nothing. Yes. I, I definitely agree with that, because, like I said, I actually lost money on my amateur fights. <laughs> <laughs> so you're definitely not getting paid for it, so you shouldn't be having to go through the punishment. So that's definitely something that we can agree on. And you sound yeah. pretty passionate about it. Do you have fighters that train underneath you? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the, the head instructors at the gym. You know, of course, Marcus David, I'm one of the main, main guys, but I, and I love teaching. I'm like, a, I'm an instructor, and I, I run a majority of the, of the uh, fighter training, like practices and stuff like that. So yeah, I have a lot of guys, amateurs, and pros that I train like underneath me, and I and I, and I like doing it as a coach. But I don't agree with any of the amateurs like doing that. They were just telling me about the elbow thing, you know? Like it's just not. No, I don't agree with that. I think amateur, just like I said, you should be able to fight amateur, and and ninety percent of the time be able to fight again in one month, you know? Like you're just gaining experience. You know? It shouldn't be like a pro fight where you go to war and you, you know it takes you a week or two to walk again, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I've seen amateur fights like that where guys are getting yeah. stiffed. No, I don't agree with it. Yeah. Well, what about the gym smokers? How do you feel about those? What is it? Tell me. The gym smokers? What's a gym smoker? Uh, basically like a smoker fight where it's it's in the gym. It's not like a, a like an actual promoting type thing. Like you don't go fight uh, for a promotion. They kind of just do it in the gym, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Oh no, we do that all the time. Sparring, you know, like we go, we go to war. <laughs> I mean, again, that shit, that skin guards, gloves, beer gloves, everything. But, it, but um, I think yeah, you're saying like these guys that have like actual like real fights, the smoker fights. I mean, as long as like that's, and again, that shit, that's 
you know, mainly for amateurs, and as long as it's controlled and you got, you know, the bigger gloves and fingers and all that stuff, I think it's, I think it's fine, you know. But I also don't believe in, you know, sparring all the time, twenty four seven, getting rocked and crushed and being dangerous about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't get me, like, don't get me wrong. When I'm in camp and when we spar, I go to war. You know, like a kid, I want, I want to go hard. You want to simulate the actual fight. Yeah, yeah. And there's different, there's different opinions on that. But I'm one of the guys that I, I, I need like good hard sparring, and not even maybe, not even maybe technically do I need it, but mentally I need it. You know that that I feel comfortable going into the fight. Well, it's it's definitely working. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Don't change a thing. Don't change a thing. All right, Jonathan, what else you got for the champ? Uh, my second question I got for you is: you have I noticed that you have six rear naked choke victories in your career. Uh, do you look for those finishes, or do you just go with the flow of the fight and how it's going? Yeah. So, I, I mean, obviously, I think people can class on me as like a ground specialist, mm -hmm. and. Um, Definitely. Like back, I, do, I do some back control stuff that I feel really comfortable with, and I, I'm really good at finishing the really good choke. But um, I never like hit hunt in the sense that like I have to get to the back. But I know where my strengths are, and if, if you leave that that opening, I'll take it and, and I'll go there. So you know, like if they give me the back, I'll take it. Like last night, I, I dropped a guy with leg kicks, and I maybe could have like just stood there until the ref to stand it back up, but I instead got on him, took his back, and then you know went to my my stuff there. Just it. Like to, to, to keep this, the record, you know, and be able to be in, and not get caught, you have to, you know, you know, specialize and take the fight where you're the best and they're the worst, you know, so yeah. that's what I try to do. Definitely. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you get all these finishes, man. You're, you're a really uh, outstanding fighter, and I like watching them. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, I just, I can't understand why you haven't been picked up yet. Yeah, I, mean, I really can't understand that. I mean, I don't know. I honestly, I, I honestly, I think. Like my the only thing I can, the, the, the thing is one, which, and this is known that you know the UFC they prefer more of the stand up guys, and obviously I'm like a, a mix and majority of uh, round. Mm -hmm. And then two, I don't think they're they they want like you know they bring in a lot of guys. Like I would say, like fifty percent of the guys they bring in are guys that they're getting brought in to make another guy look good. You know? Yeah. You can't. Just, I, I honestly believe not to sound cocky, but you can't bring me in to make another guy look good. I'm gonna you bring me in and take a guy down and. Took him out, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing that. <laughs> uh, well, my third and final question I got for you. Um, I ask all the fighters that we interview this. You know, in my spare time, you know, I like playing video games. I like going to watch some movies, spending time with the family. <clears throat> Excuse me. What do you like to do in your spare time when you're not preparing for fights? Okay, so that's good. Yeah, so I don't really play video games much anymore. Like I get. Like addicted personalities, so I have to play games. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 weird, right? But don't get me wrong, I, I love Call of Duty, I love those games. I haven't played them in probably five, four years. But one of these days, I'm gonna like latch onto one again and play it for a year or two straight, you know. But as of right now, I don't do that. So as of right now, I play golf. I love golf. And Interesting. I play golf. I play. I play golf. Fight, fight week. I play golf. I think Tuesday afternoon. Oh shit. Best friend. And uh, I played a full round of 18, and then I also, um, as a hobby, I'm reading with Bulldogs, so I deal with my, my Bulldogs and stuff. Okay, now with the golf, we'll, we'll get to the dogs in a second, because I'm, I'm a dog guy. I don't like cats. You know, kittens are, kittens are cute, but, but yeah, cats... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the cat either. <laughs> cats are fucking assholes, that's why. <laughs> they're, they're assholes. Um, but since you mentioned golf, that's not... Something that you typically hear from a fighter because that's a game of patience and skill, which most of the time fighters don't have the patience for a sport that specific. So, how does it just help you focus on fight week, or is this just something that you've always been into? And are you any good at it? Yeah, so I've been into golf for about two and a half years now, three years, and I am. You know, I like it, it's golf's crazy. You have like a month where you start getting real good, and then you just like you digress because you you might change your swing and out. Everything's different. But um, no, I love golf, and um, I play it. I like doing fight week. It takes my mind off. You know, like right now, you know, fight week. You're drinking tons of water. Your intake of calories are really low, and it's a, it's a, I love playing golf. It's fun. It's relaxing. So yeah, I, I, I take it. I do honestly probably take my mind off off you know the, the diet and the fight. Do you have a favorite golfer? Yeah. 
I mean, everyone, you have to say Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods is the man. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger Woods or uh, kind of Dustin. I like Dustin a lot. Nice. Yeah, my dad's a really into golfing. Um, his uh, his favorite golfer is uh, yeah. honestly Rory McIlroy. I think that's oh, okay. Rory. I'm gonna say oh, yeah. The, the dad and the older guy should be like like Phil. But <laughs> no, Rory's awesome. He's really good. Yeah, the, the nicest swing I think. Oh, definitely. Well, that's all I've got for you. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your evening uh, again for the day after the fight. The day after the fight. The day after the fight. Damn. Damn. Uh, I'm going to send you back over to the to the host, Steve. What you got, man? Okay, so just as I was emphasizing a second ago, you just fought last night. Uh, the fight was on UFC Fight Pass. It was Titan Fifty Six. You were the headliner. Uh, that's that's pretty intense. You know how hard it is to just book a fighter, you know, it, that's in between fights, or is it, they've got a fight booked a couple months from now, and you're just trying to give get them a preview of the fight. I've never, I don't think we've ever had a fighter come on the night after. That's pretty insane. Yeah, man. So there's a thing. I don't, I don't know the exact thing, right? This is, I really feel this way about fighting. I like fighting a lot, but like it's like. I think it's like birds fly, wing blows, wing speed, it's a sand and I fight. Like, but it's really not a big deal to me. Like, like, I take it as a big deal, you know, and I put a lot of pressure on myself, but at the same time, fighting's not a big deal. You know, I just go, like, when it's fight night, okay, I'm going to show up, I'm going to fight, whatever. I don't, I don't stress about it too much, like, in a, in a roundabout way. And the same thing, so I fought last night, like, I woke up this morning, I went and coached the fighter, the fighter training, which I didn't have to do. I just like doing it. Mm-hmm. And I'll go see my godson tomorrow. And I'll just do my regular stuff, you know, like, it's just a job, you know, I just got to go in there and fight, and after it's done, it's done, you know, and I, and I love that you guys, you know, take the time to interview me, and, and that, you know, and, and took the time out of your night, you know, so thank you guys. Well, I mean, to be fair, we were already going to shoot the show tonight, so I don't think uh, we're, we're going too far out of our way, but we're pretty stoked to fucking have you on. Uh, your fighting style is super yeah. exciting. Oh, what was that? Everybody okay? Yeah, that was me. I'm just dying over here. <laughs> <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. So what I was trying to say over here before I got rudely interrupted by the co-host was, you know, we were already going to do this. You just fought last night. So, again, I got to give you mad props because uh, it's just not something that we're generally used to. I mean, you went out there, got in a cage, and fought somebody who was training to kill you. I mean, so that's that's pretty cool. I wanted to ask you a question, okay? Now, the specimen is a pretty unique nickname. How the hell did you get that one? Yeah, so so I got it because um, I have one, so I'm a, I'm a pretty good athlete, you know, and, and um, I just do things a little differently, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm a good athlete, I, can, I, can, I don't like drink water most of the time, I don't, I eat whatever I want, and I just, then, you know, like I can just do a lot of stuff and something to this, I'll, I'll learn it in a second, so I just got a nickname, like it's called the specimen, you know, just like do stuff a little differently, and I don't know, you know, I just got it, uh, one of the gym, the gym manager is one that like sort of came up with it, and they started calling me, and then there's something, I liked it, and I, I went with it. Okay, okay, now, you've also got a birthday coming up here in a couple months. Okay, and I believe you're going to be the dirty 30, like me. Yeah, yeah I know that. It's funny, research, so I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have our ways. We know people that know people. Anyways, um, so it's the big 3-0. Now, when I turned 30, I didn't really notice that much of a difference. I mean, it's harder to take the weight off, but I'm no longer, or never really was, to be fair, an athlete. Okay? So... What what are you? What are you gonna? Are you, are you gonna change anything, or are you just say it's business as usual? And then yeah, no, it's business as usual. I think it's all men, mentality. And, and on top of that, I mean, men don't reach their athletic prime until like the average is thirty one, thirty two. That's you're supposed to be your athletically peak. You know, testosterone and everything. But um, no, like it's funny. Like I remember being like twenty and training with this guy who was twenty nine. He had a bunch of fights. He was 29. I don't think 29 is old either. And he was like, "Yo, just wait until you're 29. A bunch of fights like me. You know, it's hard to get up. Listen, I have not noticed a difference between 18 to 29. I wake up every time. 
I go train, I I recover the same, I don't get like, it's, a, it's the same, I have no eight single thing, so I don't think there's going to be a change between the next now and four months, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm not really worried about it now. I think 40 might be a different story, but <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to fight in the 40, and if I am, you know, I don't know, we'll see, but <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I don't know the same difference. I'll tell you what, it's true, you're a goddamn specimen. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Like, I didn't really feel a difference between 18 and, like, 25. But, I mean, that that's, like, when I ended my fighting. So, after that, like, I just kind of, you know, I got kids, so I got fat. Not too fat, but, you know, 180 pounds at 5'6". That's pretty big. What do you usually walk around at? Yeah, no, I don't know if it's never at all. And I'm not saying that, like, to, to, to sound cool. I swear I don't. I just think it's mental, mental stuff. But, anyhow, um, no, I walk around. I walk around... Probably like 165, 168, somewhere around there. Okay, and weight cuts, are they challenging at all? Yeah, yeah, they are. They're hard. See, I'm, I'm not one of those guys, like some guys, they all walk around 170 or 180 and they 45, but like, that's when they get fat. Like, I never get, like, I, I'm always super lean, super, 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 like, in shape, ready to go. So, like, I walk around 65, 68, lean as hell. So, to get down to 45 is hard, you know, like, I never like poof up and lose my my ass. It's just and that, that's another thing. It's like that's not me trying. It's just my body. That's another way. The reason why I got the name specimen. Like I'll just eat whatever, not train, train. I'll stay one sixty seven, solid. You know, I don't, I don't, I stay super lean. So, um, but yeah, weight cuts are hard. You know, like I actually posted this last one. I had thirteen pounds left, like eleven hours left to go, and I and I cut it off. And then six hours later, I was back up to one sixty five or one sixty six. After I made 145. You said you had 11 hours and you cut 13 pounds? Yeah. <laughs> I look at a bagel and I gain 13 pounds. I didn't like No, I said I look at a bagel and I gain 13 pounds. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. I, I have it down to the science. I mean, we have it done the science. And I'm, I'm pretty, I'm really good at it. So I feel confident. Like, I know where exactly where I have to be. About two and a half weeks ago, I was too heavy. Like, I got a little worried. I said, my dad, he's super, super strict. I, was, I knew I was too heavy to make the cut. That I the cut, but I got down to where I needed to be, and the cut went smooth. We had 45 points there on the dot. Okay, now, have, have you ever, like, thought about weight classes, uh, where you want to end your career at? Because you're... I mean, I'm, 29, I'm 29 now. I've been 145 my, my whole career in the last six years, and, and I'm pretty sure I'll stay 145. I don't, I don't think I'm like gifted in the sense that, I mean, I could go to 55 or 35, both would take a lot of work, easier, I think, like, um, successful I would be at 35 because I'm not a tall guy, you know, five, five, seven, not, not tall at all, you know, like guys that are like, you know, the five, ten guys, they have the ability to go 45, 55, but I think if I wanted to change the class, I'd have to lose a little bit of muscle, go to, four, go to 35. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one of the things, too, is you're not very tall. You're 5'7", no, which is me on a good day. I, that's me on a good day. I'm 5'7", and I'm proud about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm legit 5'7", but, like, just, like, by a hair, you know, like, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no 5'7 and a quarter in there, you know? So, so, yeah, I'm not tall at all, and I'm not one of the tall guys in my, my class, but I'm also not one of the short guys either, you know? A lot of these guys, like, the Jose Aldo and all these guys, even the Chadmans, that they said the weight, the height that they posted is wrong. You know, I've met these guys, and I know how tough they are, you know? <laughs> yeah, but then you also have, like, the Dan Hookers of the world who used yeah, to yeah, fight yeah, a featherweight. Yeah, I, I train, so I, I train with a guy. He fought last night. He's 5 you know, now. His name's Shane, Shane Santana. And he walks around lighter than me, and he fights at 55. And we finally convinced him he's going to drop down to 45. And he's 6'1", I think. He's a monster, monster, monster. He's really good. Yeah. He's one, he's a he's a guy I train with. He's lanky, six one, he's strong, and he's gonna be at forty five. So that's that's yeah, those guys are, are, are hard to deal with. But those guys I'll tell you this right now, there's no secret. If you see me fight a six one guy, that that guy is gonna go to his back. Like I'm taking him down. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, hey man. That was pretty cool of you to take this. I know I've said that I don't know how many fucking times already. Um I'm just like kind of like a little speechless uh, as to why somebody would take an interview the day after the fight. So. No nah, man, you, listen, you guys, you guys help me just as much as I have, and I'm helping you. You know, you're they put me out there, put me in our show, and and, and you decided to put me on instead of some other guy. So it's appreciated both ways. 
Well, then it was all short notice. Like, I think we just started talking today. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. I saw the thing. You know, I have a bunch of messages. I saw your thing. And then I saw, it, like, if you guys are, you know, running around talking to I'm like, yeah, for sure, I'll do it. I always, I always will do it. If, I, if I'm not, like, if I see it and someone asks me, I always do it. You know, like, if people ask me, I never, I never tell anyone no. Well, that's, that's, that's fucking awesome, because for a small show like us, we're, we're not quite there yet. We're not at the Titan level. We're probably at some, you know, small local promotion. But we're working our way towards that, that goal, and then eventually we'll get to, you know, a bigger pr promotion side. I'm rooting for you for sure. Well, this has been a lot of fun, man, and I, I want to kind of do this again. We do these, uh, uh, these types of interviews. This is going to be in the show. So you're actually going to be on the episode. So, um, but I'd yeah, like to... Make sure you tag me. I'll, I'll, I'll post it on my own. Oh, hell yeah. You're, you're going to be tagged. You're going to be tagged. You're going to be on the flyer. It's going to be all cool. And I make those things. And I'm getting pretty good at them. So I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm getting better. I promise. I get, I'm getting better. But uh, I, I want to do this again because we kind of do these like where they're a little bit longer. And we kind of ask a little bit more fun questions. Um, and it's, it's just you, the focus would be all on you, we're not talking about other fights and whatever, so if you're down for something like that a little bit in the future, you know, maybe before you get your next fight uh, booking, hopefully, you know, we're, we're looking at the UFC at that point, but uh, we can, like, preview your fight, and uh, we can go a little bit into more detail about, like, you know, outside of fight life and all that other stuff, if you're, uh, if you're cool with that. Yeah, for sure, man, you just hit me up, and then I'll do it. Okay, tomorrow. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but hey, man, thanks for the time coming up with us knuckleheads. Uh, you have a good night, and uh, if you're watching the fights, enjoy the rest of them, okay? I will. Thank you, sir. You have a great night, too. Thank you, guys. All right, man. Take it easy. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we're back. So, that's going to be fun to edit. I'm going to enjoy that edit. <laughs> now, let's get over to Bellator 225. This card was from top to bottom, finishes, and fuck, dude. dude like, every finish was fucking beautiful. This was the card of cards, man. It was the epitome of, like, how you want to end your weekend. And the weekend's not even over. I still <laughs> have all of tomorrow. Yep. So, how fucking awesome was that? 14 fights, 14 finishes, and, and, if you followed Head Kick Audio way back in the day, when I say way back in the day, I mean like 2016, 2017, so just a couple years ago, the first interview I ever did as the host of this show, and this was pre-co-host Jonathan, this was pre-Crazy J, but this was also, you know, when I was doing the show by myself, and it kind of sucked. I'm not going to lie, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, the show kind of sucked. <laughs> I mean, it was just me, talking to me. And I ain't no Dan Tom, man. Shout out to the Protecting Neck Podcast. Ooh, a shameless plug. But, for real, the first interview I ever did, your boy John Manley, John Manley, CES vet, UFC vet, ultimate fighter finalist? I, th I believe he went to the final. He, he was on Neil Magny's uh, Ultimate Fighter. Neil Magny and him fought, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they fought for the, the thing. I don't know. I'd have to go back. But I know he fought Magny. And I think he was cut after that because both guys, they just had way too much respect for each other and they liked each other too much. And not in a gay sense. Nothing like that. I just think they were too good of homies to, like, want to put the hurting on each other. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, so he's fought, you know, a top 10 welterweight in the UFC. Uh, he fought in CES. Uh, now he's fighting for Titan, and he won. He won. I shot him a text earlier. Hopefully uh, we get something back. Hopefully he's got the same fucking number. I don't even know. <laughs> it's... It was like at least 1.20 a.m. when I sent the text. His time, not our time, because right now it's only uh, four minutes till 11. But, yep. I mean, it come on. Been early tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I, I felt like kind of obligated to 
shoot him a message. So hopefully it's not like, you know, some Nana that's, you know, asleep on the couch watching her soap operas. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, hopefully he's still got the same number. And if he does, we'll get him on the show. This time, like, you know, not just me. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully Jonathan will be there. That'd be best. Well, I'll, I'll definitely be there for that. Okay, so you or UFC? Ooh, fuck. Sorry, Bellator. Bellator 225. Uh, yeah. So nothing but finishes. So we're gonna probably highlight some good ones here, and then, well, it's gonna be hard, but it's also gonna be easy at the same time. All right. So uh, Henry Gracie defeated Oscar Vera via armbar round one, 250. Now, I missed this one, John. So you want to tell the listeners how this whole shit went down? Well, there was two fighters. They did some stuff. and then this I'm just kidding. That's episode one, Crazy J. This is episode 21, Crazy J. And there's a bunch of shit that fucking went down. Um, they both started coming out. You know, they're just trying to do the whole touchy-feely kind of thing, filling each other out. Uh, Gracie did, you know, what the Gracies always do. Went for the takedown, got the takedown. Uh, he was in full mount for a little bit. Uh, he was just trying to work his way in. Uh, he got a couple of, uh, I think he got both hooks in uh, with his feet. Uh, he was, uh, uh, Vera, he basically kind of like back walked to the cage. Then he actually transitioned and was on top of Gracie. And Gracie was like, no, nah, we ain't having that today. And uh, got him in the arm bar and that was all she wrote. Now, what's really fun about arm bars is how quickly they can happen, and at the Gracie level, how slick it must have looked. Like, oh, dude, it, it was, it, I mean, I know they, they train all of that all day, every day, even in their sleep, and dude, he just made it look like he's never practiced it ever. He was just like, oh, I'm just going to do it. Well, that's some slick shit, but I expect nothing less from a Gracie. But you want to hear something even slicker? Aviv Gazzoli defeated Eduardo Muravitsky. That's how I was going to say it, too. Muravitsky, so don't okay. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I don't feel bad at all. 11-second um, heel hook. Okay, are you ready to fight? Are you ready to fight? Ready? Let's go! And then the dude just like runs across, dies for the legs, and actually fucking gets the sub in 11 seconds. Holy shit. Was that a record? Uh, yes, it was. That is the newest, fastest submission in Bellator history. The newest, fastest? The newest, fastest, because I can't talk right, but I don't care. It's we need a hashtag fast. that. Newest, fastest. <laughs> Drop a hashtag right now. Well, yeah, do that. And then we'll see how many people get it later. So just go to Twitter and just put hashtag newest fastest in one, one hashtag and just post it. And we'll see how many people get it, you know, in a couple days when this thing comes out. <laughs> you got it. Uh, Sabah, Sabah Homasi. <laughs> uh, we're going to struggle with some of these names, so get over it. Definitely. Um, Homasi, uh, he's fought for Bellator. He's fought for the UFC. He was on an Ultimate Fighter. I believe he fought for World Series of Fighting too. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure. I think he might have had some strike force. Here, let me figure this out for you real quick. Uh, yeah, he was in uh, Strike Force. He fought for Titan and uh, UFC. My boy's already on it. Shit, I opened this window for nothing. My bad, Lomasi. <laughs> uh, he defeated Micah Terrell via knockout 17 fucking seconds. He didn't even have a chance to break a sweat, bro. Yeah, I think I looked at my kid to say something to her, and then I turned around, and everybody was like, Oh, yeah, yeah, I won! I'm like, the fuck happened? I had to watch the fucking replay, because... I had to watch the watch. I had to watch the replay. I don't know what the fuck is going on with me tonight. Dude, I will just spit water all over my computer. That would have been a bad thing. All right. Well, it's had worse. Didn't we drop a soda all over it? Yeah. That, that was, uh, that was kind 
fucking scary. <laughs> hey, it survived, and it's doing well, I promise. Don't worry, he's okay. Um, or at least that's what uh, the Black Beast would say if, if he was uh, on the case. But he is not. He is not. 17 seconds. I guess the guy threw a punch and it landed. There's the fight. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's got to oh, be oh, it. Oh, I remember this one. I remember this one. That's when uh, Mika threw that inside leg kick. And then Hamasi came out with the big right hand and just right on the button, dude, just boom. Knocked him clean out. So, like I said, he threw a punch and the other guy went to sleep. You know what? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> All right, Mr. Van Zant, Austin Vanderford, got his, I think, second Bellator victory over Joseph Creer via Dr. Stoppage at the end of round two. Now, Vanderford looked small compared to Creer. Okay, like, tiny. It looked like a welterweight versus a middleweight. Now, what, what weight were they fighting at? Were they fighting at middleweight, or were they fighting at welterweight? Uh, I believe it was middleweight. Yep, it was middleweight. I was looking at my notes right here. It was middleweight. That's crazy. Vanderford should be fighting at fucking welterweight, dude. He is way too small. Now, he got the win here, and he was winning the fight. It's not like he wasn't winning the fight. It's not like if the doctors didn't st step in and give him the win that he wasn't going to take it. it yeah. He looked like in, in clear control and put a lot of blood on that canvas. Do you see that shit? That, that was, was ridiculous. That was pints, bruv. Pints. Yeah. Son of a gun. But yeah, Mr. Uh, PVZ looking pretty good. I bet you the UFC is pretty upset. They passed on that guy. Uh, well, maybe this will be literally an eye-opener for them. Oh, is that a reference to his neck tattoo? <laughs> was it? No, no, it was just because what he did to that dude's eye, her face. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> play on injury. Sorry. Oh, I thought it was a play on his <laughs> fucking neck tattoo. You saw that no. shit, right? It was a big fucking eyeball. That's his neck tattoo. It's just a giant eyeball. Now I'm curious. Right. Well, that picture doesn't have it. Okay, and then right after that, <clears throat> head kick audio alum, Ricky Bandejas. My bruv, he's back in the winner's circle for the first time since being on the show. Uh, he had dropped back-to-back -back losses, uh, one to Juan Archuleta. I think that was a, was it a split decision to Archuleta, or was it uh, just unanimous? It was uh, unanimous. Okay. Yeah, so he dropped the decision to Archuleta, who was in the Bellator Featherweight Grand Prix coming up here pretty shortly. Which, dude, I'm fucking stoked. If you haven't seen that lineup, bruv, you got to check that shit out, dude. Everybody who's anybody in the Featherweight division, they're in that shit. And it's fucking stacked. Okay? Uh, but Ricky defeated Ahmed... Kai Redley. Now, Kai Redley's fought for LFA. That's where I know this guy from. This dude is tough. He's tough, man. I've seen him get his ass kicked. I believe I've seen him fight Levi Mouse, and these two just beat the shit out of each other. So, Kai Redley, he's good, man. He's good. That is a legit win for Ricky Bandejas. That is legit, and he fucking iced this dude. This dude yeah. went fucking crashing to the canvas face first. No follow-up punches were probably necessary, but you gotta fucking put the icing on the cake, especially when you're riding a two-fight losing streak. So Ricky Bendejas, back in the winner's circle, back on track. So I could see if James Gallagher wins his next fight, bruv, there's a good rematch there. Or, or, Ricky can, he just open things up for himself, really. I mean, there's Eduardo Dantas, if he's still floating around at bantamweight. Uh, there's a whole slew of fighters. I wonder if Joe Warren is still fighting or if he officially retired. Look that up for me. Joe Warren. Joe Warren? Yeah. But he only needed 121 seconds to defeat Kyretli. And, bruv, it was fucking, like, I'm not going to lie, 
I was excited for the dude. It sucks that Kyret Lee had to, you know, pay the price for his forward movement, but at the same time, dude, riding a two fight losing streak, you gotta you gotta feel happy for the guy, whether you like him or not. So we like him though. We like him, just to be fair. And honest. We, we like him so much that we're gonna I'm gonna do this little plug. If you want to catch that uh, Ricky Vendejas interview, and uh, it's on episode 10, go check that shit out. He was a really cool dude to talk to. Yeah, you can check that out on uh, the YouTube. Uh, we got a YouTube channel, which is where you're probably watching this thing. And also, uh, we've been adding, like slowly adding stuff to our Patreon. Now, we are going to be adding content to that soon, like original content. Because basically everything that's already up there, you can find everywhere else. It's just going to be another place for you to find us. And eventually what we'll move towards is stuff will be found there first. That's everywhere else, basically. So um, we're working on that Patreon now. It's just, it's tough to come up with like cool shit for you guys. So, but we got some pretty fucking big in the works. So... It's just gonna, that's gonna take a lot of time to fucking do, but uh, I will be super fucking stoked when we are ready to announce that. Um, but yeah, so, Bendejas, round one, over Kai Redley. it was dope. After that, uh, Chris Dysonel? D Dysonel? Uh, Dysonel, yeah. Uh, he defeated uh, top prospect Mike Kimball. Uh, with only six seconds left to spare in the round, and after getting his ass kicked for all of that round, don't, I mean, he was getting his ass kicked, but it was still competitive. But Kimball made a mistake and paid the fucking price. And the stoppage, I don't care who you are, I looked at it from every fucking angle, that was a good stoppage, man. So, hopefully Kimball can bounce back from this. Uh, and he's young, so I'm sure he will. Uh, John Manley defeated Thiago Arela via rear naked choke with 13 seconds left to spare in the fight. And he was getting his ass kicked. So John Manley turns it around and takes out the Brazilian with jiu-jitsu. That was dope. Not only was it cool to see John get the win, but it was impressive to see him not give up. That's the type of heart that we love, man. We love that shit. Definitely. And I think it also shows like his, uh, I guess, mental mental stability, I guess, while while he's in there. I mean, a lot of people, if they were been getting their ass handed to them, they would be mentally defeated. To, and not, not John Manley, dude. He was like, you know what? I am getting my butt kicked, but you know what? I'm going to win this fucking fight. Goddamn, he fucking won that fight. Yeah, and to his credit, his opponent was six foot four. So, I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. That, that's a tall string bean, man. So, oh, yeah. kudos to Manley. Like I said, hopefully, when I get my phone, which is way over there, doing this thing, um, hopefully, John has said something and not. Hello, Joyce. Connor Dixon. We'll see if anybody gets that reference. Anybody. You hear that? That's a big what vehicle. That? That's a big vehicle driving by. Oh, shit. I can still hear the engine. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if they can. Anyway, uh, Connor Dixon defeated Castriot Zima. <laughs> Try to not cough in that phone. I'm trying not to. It was an arm bar in round three. I just hope I'm pronouncing these names right. No? Nope. Yeah, I, I think you are. Yeah, I kind of I missed these uh, last two fights. Yeah, he was... Uh, <clears throat> what did you call it earlier? You called it something. Uh, I don't remember. Down. <laughs> you did via text. You messaged me. It was right after the uh, 
the, the interview with uh, uh, the specimen. You had messaged me saying you were, gonna, were you regulating? Is that what you were doing? You're regulating? I think you were regulating. Oh yeah, I had to go uh, had to go regulate my kids. <laughs> so it's a good thing that he muted the phone because there were screams. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. There were no. Screams. <laughs> well, at least I don't know because he really did mute the phone. But that's only because we were in the middle of an interview. Oh yeah. That's right, we interviewed a fighter while watching fights because we're that fucking badass. I had my TV muted, so it was, a, it was a lot of fun shit going on. So, again, thanks to Jason for doing all that shit. Nick Newell! Now, if you don't know who Nick Newell is, he is a professional MMA fighter that has fought for uh, uh, just about every current modern organization out there. So I believe he's fought at like. Sorry. <laughs> he's fought at like uh, I think it's CES because they're more like uh, the his area. Uh, I think he fought for CES, or it may have been like uh, Legacy or or RFA back in the day. Uh, he's yeah. also fought for World Series of Fighting, where he actually made it to the title and lost to Justin Gaethje. So. Okay. Apparently, his loss to Justin Gaethje means that he doesn't belong in the big leagues, according to Dana White. I don't, I don't know, because I believe that was his last loss before he tried getting into the, the UFC. But he was on the Contender Series, and he lost to a guy that was only 4-0. But, uh, like, the dude that was 4-0 was actually pretty fucking good. He was a really good wrestler, so I don't know. Anyway, um, but Nick Newell comes in here to Bellator and fucking submits his guy, Corey Browning, in three minutes. I mean, now, I, I, I don't know who Corey Browning is. I don't know what he really brings to the table. So I'm actually going to go find out. I should have. I didn't do my homework. I didn't do any fucking homework. I probably should have. Well, for some... Uh, he was 5-1. Uh, he was 5-1. So, I mean, that's not that bad. No, it's not, it's not bad at all. That's not that bad. His record's better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't talk shit. But yeah, Nick Newell gets the fucking win here, and I believe they were in Connecticut tonight, weren't they? Yeah. That's his fucking state, man. Like, he's probably the biggest, one of the biggest fighters, at least, from Connecticut. I mean, they put him as the main event of the preliminary card for a fucking reason. They wanted people to watch that shit. You gotta pay attention. Gotta pay attention to uh, well, card placement, bro. Card placement. Yeah. They I really... <laughs> dude, they wanted people to watch the prelims. Let me just... Okay, I know we just went over all these results, but bear with me here. Nick Newell, John Manley, Ricky Bendejas, Austin Vanderford, Sabah Hamasi, and the Gracie. On the fucking prelims, bro. That's sick, dude. That is fucking sick. And that is why we watched the shit out of them. That's right. And the main card wasn't too shabby either. Uh, Tyrell Fortune defeated the undefeated Rudy Scafferoth, or Shafferoth, I'm not really sure how he pronounced it. Do you remember? Uh, Shafroth. Shafroth? <laughs> His last name is almost as bad as mine. Shafroth. <laughs> uh, rear naked choke after he wobbled the fuck out of that guy. Yeah. That was pretty that dope. That was. And, uh... Tyrell, he's actually, he fights out of, uh, uh, uh Tempe, place. baby. Yeah, Tempe. I forgot what the name of the, the fight thing is. Uh, if, is it Power? Uh, I'm not sure. It's the one that Ryan Boehner, uh, trains at. I'm not sure if they call it Power MMA anymore, but it's the one where Ryan and Aaron Simpson are, like, the fucking owners of that bitch. Two of the baddest dudes on the planet. First of all, Ryan Bader's a champ champ in Bellator light heavyweight champ and heavyweight champ and Aaron Simpson one of the best wrestlers to ever get into mixed martial arts didn't do too bad in the UFC as a welterweight or a middleweight I really miss that dude fighting I really dug Aaron Simpson I have no idea why I just really liked the guy and I got to meet him and he was cool as fuck so I got pictures maybe I'll post them sometime I don't fucking know anyway oh there it goes again my AC turned off it's fucking cold this bitch I'll tell you that much, man. 
That's the way we like it. You'd think I work in a morgue. Uh, <laughs> Yaroslav Almosov defeated David Rickles via Dar's Choke in round two. Now, Rickles, the king of the walkouts in Bellator, has the most fights in Bellator, and I think he's like tied for third with the most wins in Bellator. Was This was the first time he got submitted? And this is all Yar Yaroslav? I'm just going to call him Amosov. Amosov is also the same guy that beat Hurricane. Now, if you don't know who I'm talking about when I say Hurricane, I'm talking about Gerald, Har Gerald Harris. Now, those are two fucking like, fantastic wins underneath this guy's belt. So, this is one dude, we need to learn how to pronounce his name, and we need to keep an eye on him. Because, uh, this guy could be a fucking problem. Because, uh, Hurricane, that dude is raw power. Even at 39, or he may be, is he 40 yet? Or is his birthday in, like, November? Uh, I think his birthday's in November. Yeah, I believe he's, up, he's almost there. So, he's either there or almost there, but still, the guy is... He hits like a fucking Mack truck, dude. Mm. <clears throat> and now, David Rickles. I mean, this guy's building quite a fucking resume. So, <clears throat> again, the first time Rickles was ever submitted. What did you think of the walkout, though? Uh, I thought it was kind of... kind of funny. Um, I thought it was going to be more along the lines of, like... I guess his last walkout that I get, maybe it was the one that I saw. He fucking came out with a fucking animatronic dinosaur. Like, come on, you gotta, like, top that. You can't have fucking head and try to come out like that. Well, I believe he was uh, mimicking another fighter that used to have uh, pretty decent walkouts. Now, the name escapes me. I was talking about uh, a gentleman... Uh, gave me the name on Twitter, and of course, my phone's way over there, so I can't even, like, you know, pull it and tell you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Give me a second. Give me a second. Jeez, you can hear that. So the people that are fucking listening with the audio, they're going to hear... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, jeez, poor people. Uh, their ear pulls. Uh, well, uh, earlier you wanted me to find out about Joe Warren, and uh, I didn't see anything that says that uh, he was retired or anything or not fighting. The baddest uh, man on the planet. The self-proclaimed yeah. baddest man on the planet. Yeah, so... I forgot what we were talking about about him. Yeah. Oh, just, I, I wanted to find out if the dude is still retired, because if not, Ricky Bandejas versus Joe Warren, hashtag would watch that shit. Uh, yeah, that would be a fucking badass fight. So let's see. Yes, okay, so, uh... Chesty Chastain... Uh... He said he invoked Genkai Sudo, the real king of walkouts. So basically he was mimicking this uh, Genki Sudo. And he actually, I heard the name. So uh, the cameraman that was filming the walkout up close, you could hear David Rickles like giving props to Genki Sudo. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's one of those things. So thank you, Chesty Chastain, at Chesty Chastain on Twitter. Um, but yeah, I okay, so the walkout was cool. Don't get me wrong. It was a cool walkout. But I've, like, become, like, it wasn't what I thought it would be. Like, it was good. Yeah, same here. It didn't meet my expectations. Because I was expecting over the top, oh my god. Now, again, don't get me wrong, it was a good walkout. And it was like, you know, he was paying respect to another guy who did what he does. So I get it. I get it. And the, like the whole bucket head and the, the fucking shit shooting out of his head, I think. And then, you know, he had the mask on. And like there was a whole lot going on. And then like the, the, the banner or the flag or whatever it was behind him. And what is love, baby? Don't hurt me. Yeah, that was good. I can't. W I can't wait to hear how that sounds because it sounded halfway decent in my head. Plus, I got some pretty good acoustics in here. So. I like the whole uh, night at the Roxbury kind of thing. Yeah, and he was. Yeah, he was doing that whole fucking thing. Wasn't that one yeah. of the songs that's playing when they're in their little car? 
Yeah, that was, I think that was like the like the main theme of like that whole movie. Every time that song played, they would just do their little head bumping thing. Now I want somebody, anybody, to fucking go to our Twitter, right? Or not go to our Twitter, but fucking uh, tweet and at us and fucking shame me for not ever watching that movie ever. Uh, I quit the show. <laughs> right? But I, I need I need somebody to shame me because I'm not going to remember to go watch this movie because I do want to watch it. Because this isn't the first time that it's ever been referenced. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's something that I need to do. So Twitter, remind this guy in the form of trash talk and it better be fucking good. Um, otherwise, you're just wasting your fucking time. Just don't do that. Don't do that. Um... Alejandra Lara defeated Taylor Turner via knockout, TKO, whatever you want to call it, uh, in round one, uh, tree 44, not quite tree 50, not quite, but uh, Alejandra Lara was the girl that came out on the weigh-ins with, uh, you know, the anti-deforestation, like, uh, message, and it was all over her body, all over, and it, and I'm assuming like Sharpie or something, um, or an eco-friendly oh, yeah. marker. I have no idea, but yeah. I, I kind of like I kind of dug it. She was using her fucking platform, and I think she got her message across. And I'm just hoping that you know, the appropriate people are listening to anybody who's trying to get this message out. Um, and what we're referring to is, I, I believe the Amazon is on fire, and that's mm-hmm. that's not good. That's what we brief. We brief their heirs, and if we can't brief, or if they can't brief, we can't brief. We can't brief, we die. Yep. So, um, all bullshit and jokes aside, that's a real fucking thing, and we need to figure out a way to stop it. Back to the show. Um, Yeah, so, it's not very often, I mean, she was piecing her up on the feet, sits her on her butt, and then it's just fucking wailing on her, ref's got to call it. So, uh... I think this was the only female card, the female card, female fight on the card, right? Uh, yep. As I look and, up and down and this uh, card. What was really cool about this fight, uh, my, my daughters uh, came to sit down and they were like, we want to watch the fights. And I'm like, okay. And uh, uh, my oldest daughter wanted Alejandro to win and my youngest daughter wanted Taylor to win. And so as soon as... Uh, the ref was getting them ready, and he was like, fight. They both got up out of the chair, and they both started to fight. And my oldest daughter said, I'm Alejandra. I'm going to beat you. And my youngest was like, and I'm Taylor, and I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, my oldest, she likes uh, when we're watching the uh, the Invicta. We sat there, and we watched the last one together when uh, Pam Sorsen defeated uh, Caitlin Young. Mm-hmm. So... I know that uh, my girls like it when the girls fight, and especially in Victor, because it's just all girls, and it's all awesome. Um, so, with the only female fight on the card, we still get a knockout. We get a finish. It was awesome. Yeah, it was very beautiful. In the evening's co-main event, Vitaly Minikov defeated Timothy Johnson via knockout round number one. Um, 15 seconds shy of the two-minute mark. Inside of round one, uh, holy shit! He sat this dude down, and he sat him down hard. I hope yeah, Tim's okay. That was, that was some nasty, nasty shots. That was fucking brutal. That was fucking brutal. And I don't think it would have been as brutal if these just weren't two giants, okay? Because yeah. the first right hand that he hit him with wasn't too hard, but when he had him up against the cage, he gave him the one-two. Fuck. Me, that would fucking. I doubt. I he might break my neck hitting me the way he hit Tim. Yeah. Tim's a heavyweight, so he's a lot bigger of a man, so he could you know take a lot more punishment than I could. But still, dude, that's a fucking. That's a big dude hitting a dome piece. And uh, like I said, I just hope that that Tim's okay. But uh, Vitali, he's. Returning after the first loss of his entire career, he was twenty-one and zero, I believe, 
or or twenty and zero. I think it was twenty one and zero. And uh, he ran into uh, Czech Congo. Now he beat Czech Congo in their first meeting, and Czech Congo beat him in the second time. So we're looking for a trilogy here, but I don't think anybody's really looking for the trilogy. Hopefully, nobody's looking for the trilogy because um, both fights weren't exactly barn burners. But if it happens, it happens. I think Minikoff probably, uh, maybe, if he wants it, ah, fuck, like, give it to him. He just, he might have killed a man. Who, who knows, man? <laughs> who fucking knows? After, like that, after a fight like that, hey, man, call your shot, and you better get it, right? Hell yeah. Uh, and then in the main event, we had a little bit of a distraction. And if it's distracting Mitrione, it's distracting everybody else, except for the guy that's trying to win. Because he's just going to take advantage of it. Like he did. Yeah. Okay? He did. If that were me, I'd be like, no, dude, get your mouthpiece. I wouldn't take advantage and then fucking proceed to punch you in the mouth and then knee you in the face. Yeah, well, I mean... Is that was it a defective mouthpiece, or was a uh, Mitrione like really not you know keeping his mouth closed to hold the mouthpiece in? Well, Mitrione Mitrione tends to like be loose, so sometimes his mouth is just open, and it was a quote unquote new mouthpiece. And when I say new, I mean they probably couldn't find his mouthpiece, and then just hey, just give me one, because <clears throat> I can't really see. Uh, guy at hit at that level, like just not having a fucking mouthpiece or having a mouthpiece that they trust. Yeah. Now I put a tweet out there that that mouth guard company is probably not gonna get great reviews. Oh no, especially yeah, definitely not after tonight. Hell no. Yeah. So I, I'm assuming not, and I'm I'm assuming they will go unnamed because I do not know who the fuck who the fuck they are. But yeah. You guys should probably make a better product, I guess. Or, you know, maybe Mitrione should just have his original one that's fit to his mouth. Yeah, maybe maybe he should have uh, two mouthpieces on, on hand, you know, that is fitted the way that he wants to be fitted. So just in case this happens, he's always got a backup. Yeah. I go with every fight, you know? I agree. I agree 100%. You should have an extra mouthpiece and an extra cup. Because what happens if your jockstrap rips? Sure. Now, uh, the one thing I did want to kind of ask is uh, I noticed it like at the very beginning of, uh, of the card. How come the gloves are a little bit bigger in Bellator than what the UFC uses? Or is it the same size, they just look bigger? Bellator does have a different design of glove, which is why you see less eye pokes. Uh, so it kind of forces the fighter's hand to stay closed. Not necessarily, but uh, I think it forces like the ha the fingers like forward instead of up. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So, but if you if you haven't noticed in Bellator, there's significantly less eye pokes than there is yeah. in the UFC. Yeah, Sig I don't think I saw one eye poke this entire card. <laughs> yeah, super significantly less eye pokes than a Yoel Romero fight. Oh, yeah, definitely. Or a DC fight. <laughs> Seriously. That yeah, thumb, man. That thumb. That, that, was, that was brutal. That was all up in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all up in there is an understatement. <laughs> when you can only see the back knuckle to the thumb, yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty bad. <laughs> but, yeah, Sergey Karitanov defeated uh, Matt, Matt Trion. I'm channeling my inner... Uh, Ben Folks here. I was going to give him a shout out on Twitter, but I didn't know what time it was his time and you know, he's got little ones and stuff, so he he may have been asleep. So Ben Folks, yeah. You're right here, Bubba. Um but yeah. Uh Kerry Tonoff like basically was just at the first couple times he was like, "Okay, man, get your mouthpiece. It's cool. It's cool." And then at the end there, he's just like, "You know what? Fuck this shit, bro. If you can't keep that shit in your mouth here, Right in your mouth, yep. and then poof, right in your mouth. Okay, for those of you who are just listening and can't see, I punch the air, and I need the air. I do need the air. If I don't have the air, I breathe, but I need it with my knee. Um, 
So that topped off Bellator 225. So before that, you had 13 finishes. Finishes. Mm -hmm. And then in your main event, which this is a rematch. They fought or tried to fight a few months back. I think it was like in, I don't remember when. Like maybe May or something like that. Here, let me just see if I can figure that out. Um, but the fight ended in a no contest because Karitanov, or Karitanov, however you say it, I'm not sure, but he got uh, kicked in the balls. <laughs> he got kicked in the, right in the mommy-daddy button, and uh, he could not continue. They had to take him out on a stretcher, I believe. Oh, wow, he's only six foot tall. That's fucking crazy. Like, dude, you gotta be hit super hard to be taken out on a stretcher. Holy shit. You know, they should change that uh, accidental low kick to an accidental either ball kick or low blow. <laughs> Because uh, an accidental low kick, well, low kicks are, you know, they're just low. They're not high kicks. So yeah. it could have been a lay kick for all I know. But no, they're just talking about kicking in the nuts. But that was back in February. So neither of these guys fought in six months. That's crazy. Yeah. I think. I think. Maybe maybe Mitrione fought um, another time. I don't know. But... Uh. Oh. No, neither one, neither one of them fought until tonight, since that fight. Yeah, so Mitrion falls to, like, 13-6 and six or 13-7 and seven, um, with all yeah. of his professional uh, fights being in only the UFC and now Bellator. That's it. He, he made his professional MMA debut in the UFC. So he basically did all his growing up in the UFC, and then once they, I think they may have released him, or they just didn't want to resign him when his contract was up, something like that. It was a couple of years ago, so of course I'm not going to remember. But uh, yeah, Bellator picked him up. So uh, let me see, where are we at time wise? Oh, we're just about an hour. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and go to the schedule here. schedule. Um, and we're going to go ahead and talk about what we are going to be going over next week, which will be Dana White's Contender Series 26. Uh, I believe that's the last one, too, which is pretty sad, because I've been digging the Tuesday fights. I've been digging Laura. I've been digging Laura Sanko, okay, because we've decided uh, I get Laura and he gets Heidi, right? That's her name, Heidi? What's her name? No, uh, uh, Jen Brown. Okay, well, you can have her um, not that we're, you know, these are, these women are possessions. They're just, they're on our team, okay? Um, and then we got on August 30th, we're going to be going over LFA 74, Vandera versus Ferreria, a heavyweight main event. And then, uh, UFC on ESPN 15, or UFC China, is what I'm sure we're going to call it. Uh, Andraj versus Zhang. So Jessica Andraj, the UFC strawweight champion, is defending her belt against Je uh, Chinese-born Wei Li Sang. Um, that's going to be a good fucking fight. You're getting a title fight and you're getting it for free. The only fucking disclaimer is it's going to be at like 3 o'clock in the morning. So get your coffee. Get your coffee. And I'm sure we'll have some other cool shit. Maybe another fucking interview. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Oh, definitely. And we'll probably have some more cops if we in there, just because... Yeah, hopefully we get this fucking bad boy taken care of. Have I dropped enough F-bombs this episode? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I am not sure. I'm working on this language thing, guys, I promise. Because it even annoys me. So, because I have to listen to these things every time we're done with them, just to make sure we didn't F something up. <laughs> so... <laughs> nice. Yeah, dude, I think that's it. Bellator 225, Titan 56, Dana White's Contender Series 25, on episode 21, with a special guest, Jason, uh, Specimen, Specimen, uh, Suarez, that's the Titan featherweight champ, 14-0, undefeated, uh, where apparently 
my stom- my dachshund agrees. Um, <laughs> yeah. So until next time.